What is happening everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to Daily Chelsea News Video, your transfer news video. Let me start that again. Welcome to your Daily Chelsea Transfer News Update Video. Ah, very professional. <laughs> How you all doing? Welcome to the channel. A few things I want to update you on today. I'm keeping everyone posted on Football Therapy as new stories emerge around world football regarding Chelsea Football Club. So if you haven't yet done so, please do make sure you are subscribed to Football Therapy and click the bell notification icon and why not like the video to help your brother out. The window is well and truly open and loads of reaffirming stories are coming out in news outlets as well as new ones. Stories of linked players are up and coming all over the gaff and whether that's agents putting the stories out, players expressing interest, Chelsea scouts being spotted around the world at different leagues and stuff. But when certain news stories get regurgitated 1000 times around the media, you know there's probably some truth to it. Chelsea, who have a lot of money to spend this January, who really do want to bolster all their efforts in absolutely securing Champions League football this season, which might be seen as overachieving for Frank Lampard this campaign, they're doing everything they can to help his cause with spending money. And apparently they've seen a stern bid of £34 million for Leon Strike and Moussa Dembele rejected. We'll talk about that in a moment. Outgoings from Chelsea football clubs such as the left back situation, certainly Emerson, Marcus Alonso and stuff, discussions are going on. I imagine the most rapidly moving discussions are for Chelsea striker Olivier Giroud who is desperate for a move. Giroud's been linked to high profile clubs such as Inter Milan, um, Atletico Madrid, which is huge, but also Premier League clubs, which might be easier for the Frenchmen, such as West Ham and now Aston Villa to join up with John Terry and the gang. Bearing in mind, Aston Villa, they've got a good team. They came up, they very much want to stay in the Premier League, but look like they're struggling and they're many people's favorites to go down now. They need a few more goals. They've got an injured striker. They need a big strong man up front. Olivier Giroud could be your boy. So that's an interesting one to follow. But I also want to talk about Jadon Sancho and Timo Werner, the two Galactico level and legitimate Chelsea targets who Chelsea would have the money to certainly buy one of them due to the amount of revenue they've accumulated while they've not been able to spend. These two players are having wonderful individual seasons, both consider themselves in the title race, probably both in their own rights, going for player of the season and having a wonderful time in their Germanic campaigns. Both Timo Werner at Leipzig and Jadon Sancho at Dortmund, it does look like they'll both be staying at those clubs until the summer window. Now I kind of get that with Timo Werner, how important he is to Leipzig, he's been there for a few years now, scoring a lot of goals sitting pretty at the top of the Bundesliga and can end the campaign as top goal scorer. Also needs to impress in his homeland for the upcoming Euros so he can lead the line comfortably and not be pushed out wide. So that kind of makes a lot of sense for Timo Werner. I get it. And to be honest, he, as well as RB Leipzig, probably understand completely how come the summer there'll be a deal done. The club will make loads of money, he'll get some sort of high profile move, everybody wins. So with a striker, it's difficult. That's why in my last video yesterday, when I was talking about players like Gabriel Barbosa, who already, I think, finished their campaigns or at the end of their campaigns in South America, it's a lot easier to get these type of players than players that play in Europe. Now, when it comes to Jadon Sancho, it's again like a similar story to Timo Werner in terms of him having a wonderful individual season and helping his respective club to greatness this campaign. But when they signed Erling Haaland, I'm sure that, I wasn't sure, but I speculated right, well, he slots straight into that front three with Royce and Torgan Hazard. I know Torgan Hazard's been playing as a wing back in a 3-4-3 system, but I could see, you know, Erling Haaland down the middle, flanked by Royce and Torgan Hazard. An interchangeable front two behind the striker. I don't know, for me it would look like goals were being replaced and maybe they were prepared to let Jadon Sancho go in January to make loads of money. Now as things stand, that does not look like the case and it does look like he will remain at the club until next summer, which kind of makes sense for both player and club. It just, you know, it's frustrating for potential buyers who would really like that super talent 
in their team right now to help whatever they're doing in their season. So very, very unlikely, but we'll obviously keep you updated here on Football Therapy. Next up, he is injured at the moment, but probably not that long term. A lot of people are getting very, very serious about sniffing around Nathan Ake. Bournemouth are in big, big trouble at the moment, and I think they might get relegated. And although Nathan Ake has been a bit of a cult hero there and is probably their best player, he's think probably thinking, right, time to get out of here. <laughs> I can go to, no disrespect to Bournemouth, I can go to a club and, you know, maybe try and fight for top four or a domestic cup or something. So a lot of clubs are interested. Now, of course, Chelsea have the buyback clause for £40 million, but also clubs like Tottenham now are really interested alongside the likes of Manchester City. And I can understand why Pep Guardiola would be interested in Nathan Ake. So it's additional pressure on Chelsea Football Club regarding do they activate this buyback clause? Because 40 million is, is still like a really good deal for a Premier League proven defender, especially when Bournemouth quoted less than 75 million pounds for him originally to sort of wave away their interest. Even if Nathan Ake puts in, say, a transfer request, they'll probably try and squeeze 50 plus for him to a club that does not have the right to activate a buyout clause. Whether he'd want to go to Tottenham, I'm not so sure. Maybe a club like City though, we'll have to see. There's a very strong chance that Nathan Ake will move this January. Right, Italian news outlets have been reporting that Kalido Koulibaly of Napoli will be available in January. For yes, you've guessed it, a world record fee for a defender. Now, it's been widely accepted over the last few years, or it would not be uncommon for if someone to, if you are to ask someone, right, who's the best two centre backs in the world? That person, if they know a lot about football and had common opinion, they'd say, right, well, Virgil van Dijk and Kalido Koulibaly. So you'd kind of understand, especially it being January as well, why it would be a world record transfer fee. 100 million is the price being bounded around. And for me, I've talked about this before on Football Therapy, I'm not entirely sure it would be a good move for Chelsea. Sure, Chelsea have defensive issues, but really a lot of it most of the time is systemic and they don't have bad, bad players in the bag. They need to finish off chances and kill games off when they're a goal ahead and to spend the vast majority of their transfer budget on a centre back who is nearly in his 30s and still would need time to acclimatise to the league mid-season. Does that sound like a good investment to you? I'm not so sure personally. So maybe Manchester City would be the clubs looking to splash out 100 million on Kalido Koulibaly, but who knows? Obviously Chelsea apparently needing a centre back it's, he's always going to be linked to Chelsea, let's be honest. But in reality, it's a different one because Nathan Ake is very, very good, but how much of an upgrade is he on Tomori, Zuma and Rudiger? All decent Premier League centre-backs. Certainly, Rudiger's meant to be very good. Tomori's meant to have a very, very bright future. And Zuma's meant to be like a decent level Premier League centre-back. I mean, Christensen's very, very talented, but he certainly has his physicality flaws. So, to Chelsea spend the money, the argument for Nathan Ake is it's very, very good value, so they'd be inclined to do it and preventing him to going to Premier League rivals, like direct top four rivals as well. Still, I imagine Kalido Koulibaly might move in January, but if it's something to do with Chelsea, I'll of course keep you updated. Right, Chelsea have apparently had their first bid for a striker, a centre forward, officially rejected. £34 million for Leon striker Moussa Dembele, once of Celtic, very, very highly thought of as a centre forward, scores a decent amount of goals, wouldn't necessarily be the starting striker at Chelsea, but could offer enough competition behind Chelsea's number nine, Tammy Abraham. Dembele is young and he's already into double figures in the league in France this season, in a team that's not really competitive with PSG. <laughs> 10 goals, and maybe he'd be interested in such a move. The reported bid of £34 million pounds would probably sound about right and quite a healthy starting bid from Chelsea Football Club. I can't imagine they'd go any more, but remember, this is going to be an inflated price regardless due to it being January and due to them being pretty desperate for a centre forward to offer their competition. I imagine they would table a second bid, but for how much more? I'm not so sure. Leon did release a statement saying they have no interest in letting the striker go and they've only just got him and they want to build a team with him moving forwards and go away anyone tabling bids bye bye bye. But Chelsea have watched the striker for a long time and I'm 
pretty certain that they'll come back in for another bid and really test Leon's resolve and be like, look, what if we give you all this? Or who knows, maybe offer Olivier Giroud the other way and so you get a striker as well, World Cup winner, scores goals, eh? It could happen. Chelsea have not been able to do business in the last transfer window and they absolutely will be doing bits now and making moves and they've got money in their pockets, they'll be strutting around, they'll be trying not to look desperate because they're in quite a strong position generally. But still, they will be looking to do up to maybe three plays in, maybe four, who knows? Definitely three or four outgoings as well. Remember to swing by Football Therapy every single day and I'll keep you updated with all the news stories going around the media. I'll consolidate them and I'll express my opinions on certain ones that I find interesting to you guys. If you have enjoyed the content today, guys, please make sure you do like the video and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Remember, if you want more content from yours truly, you can subscribe to Yan Plays. Link is in the top of the description and you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Make sure you enjoy the football. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry I don't. I love me baby.